Welcome back mathematicians. In this video we are going to discuss angles and we're going to start with the definition of an angle. If two rays are drawn with a common vertex they form an angle. One ray of the angle is called the initial side and the other ray is called the terminal side. So I'm going to start by making my common vertex and I'm going to make my initial side horizontal for this first angle. I'm then going to draw my terminal side diagonal and I'm going to show the angle. I'm, I'm going to identify the angle by showing the direction and amount of rotation from the initial side to the terminal side. So I will do this with a curved arrow. So I'm going to start with the initial side and draw my curved arrow towards the terminal side. If the rotation is counterclock in the counterclockwise direction, the angle is positive. Because this starts at the initial side and has a counterclockwise direction, this is a positive angle. Now, what if I draw another angle? My initial side is still horizontal. I'm going to call that IS for short. And my terminal side is also, again, diagonal. I'm going to call that TS for short. But in this case, I'm going to change the rotation. I'm going to start with my initial side, but I'm going to rotate clockwise around the coordinate plane, around the angle to the terminal side. And if the rotation is clockwise, in the clockwise direction, so if, again, that curved arrow is in the clockwise direction, the angle is negative. So this is a negative angle. Next, let's define standard position. An angle theta, and that is the Greek letter theta, is said to be in the standard position if its vertex is at the origin of a rectangular coordinate system and its initial side coincides with the positive x-axis. I'm going to go ahead and draw two angles. In the first coordinate plane, I'm going to put the vertex on the origin. The initial side will coincide with the positive x-axis. And I'm going to put the terminal side in quadrant number one. And so what I'm then going to do is draw an angle, and I'll make this angle counterclockwise direction, which means that this angle theta is positive. I'm going to draw a second angle. The vertex is still on the origin. The initial side is still coinciding with the positive x-axis. In this case, I'm going to make the terminal side in quadrant number three. I'm going to draw the curved arrow to indicate rotation, but I'm going to go in the clockwise direction. And in this case, that indicates that theta is negative. Both of these represent angles that are in standard position, as long as the vertex is on the origin and the initial side is coinciding with the positive x-axis. Now what I'd like to do is draw each of these angles, and there's, these are really just sketches, I want to be clear. In order to do these accurately, I would need tools or I would need technology. So I'm just sketching these. I'm going to draw each angle in standard position, and I'm going to start with 30 degrees. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw my initial side and my vertex. So all of these are going to have the same initial side and the same vertex when drawn in standard position. Next, I'm going to identify what each of my axes represent in terms of degrees. So the positive x-axis represents zero degrees. The positive y-axis represents a 90 degree angle. Then if we rotate further to the negative x-axis, that actually represents a positive 180 degree angle. Then if we rotate to the negative y-axis, that represents a positive 270 degrees. And then finally, if we continue to rotate all the way back around to the positive x-axis, that also represents a positive 360 degrees. So uh, now that I know this, I can tell you that the 30 degree angle will be in quadrant number one with a counterclockwise rotation. And it is important to, to identify the rotation with that curved arrow. So in this case, again, counterclockwise. Now, is that exactly where it's located in the coordinate plane? Probably not, but this is just a sketch. Next, I'm going to do negative 120 degrees. So I will start once again with the vertex and the initial side. But in this case, because of the fact that it's negative 120 degrees, I know I'm going to go clockwise. Now, some of you may be able to do it using the angles that I marked in the first problem. But what you could do is actually rotate the other way around, marking the axes accordingly. 
So yes, negative y-axis is 270 degrees, but it's also negative 90 degrees. And then that means that the negative x-axis is negative 180 degrees. The positive y-axis would be negative 270 degrees. And then zero degrees would also be negative 360 degrees if we continue to rotate. Given that information, I know that negative 120 degrees will be in quadrant number three because negative 120 is between negative 90 and negative 180. Keeping in mind, I do need to identify the rotation, so I will start with the initial side and rotate clockwise to the terminal side. Next, I'm going to go to 450 degrees. Now, what hopefully you recognize right away with 450 degrees is that 450 degrees is larger than 360. So we will start once again with the vertex and the initial side. I'm going to again mark the positive x-axis as zero degrees. Then we have 90 degrees. Then we have 180 degrees. Then we have 270 degrees. We also have 360 for the positive x-axis. I can keep going if I want to, to the positive y-axis, add another 90 degrees, and this is 450 degrees. So this tells me that my terminal side actually should be on the positive y-axis. Now what I should do is number one, identify the rotation, which because it is a positive angle, it will be counterclockwise. But because it actually is 450 degrees, which is one full revolution plus some extra, I need to identify that. So I'm gonna start on the initial side and I'm going to make my arrow go all the way around the coordinate plane to identify that it went around 360 degrees and it continues further till it ends at 450 degrees. So that's how you would mark an angle that is larger than 360 degrees. You would do the same if it was negative 450 degrees, but you would then go clockwise direction instead of counterclockwise direction and maybe marking your angles like we did in the second problem. All right, guys, I hope that helps. Thanks.